Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Hot Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, all my channel is all about loving our collections as they currently are, being very critical of new makeup releases, and being very considerate about what we decide to bring into our makeup collections, because I just want us to all be a little bit more responsible and be a little more considerate, you know, about our makeup collections. Are they too big? Whatever, whatever. Today's video is really about, like, loving our collections as they currently are. So this is part of my Let's Play With Makeup series, which is literally that. We're just playing with makeup. We're gonna put some things on our face. So I encourage you, these are always pretty long form, about 45 minutes long. Typically it seems to be the length of these videos. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is pull out some makeup that you either haven't played with in a while and you don't really know how you feel about it or pull out some newer makeup that you've purchased that you still haven't quite landed on how you feel about them yet because that's what this is all about. Basically the format of these, I tell you what I'm gonna use, then I use them and then I reflect on my usage of them today as I use them. So that is kind of the rundown of what we do here on Let's Play With Makeup, but I also like to encourage you to play with your makeup as well, and maybe you'll see something, maybe you use something old that you forgot that you loved and remember why you loved it, or maybe you use something old and you're like, why is this even in my collection? These are the things that this should spark. That's what I want this to be. So if you are new here and that sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel and make sure you like this video it helps me out quite a bit and then i am also on patreon if you would like to support me there i have contacts in for the first time since saturday it is wednesday i scratched my eye i cut my nails because my nail <laughs> scratched my eye and i was like you don't deserve long nails right now because you've messed up and i've like done that before but it was like pretty bad like i woke up the next day and my eye was like very bloodshot and I knew it wasn't from the usual reason my eyes might have been bloodshot. For a little bit of prep, I'm going to put the Mario Badescu, this is the mint lip balm. I have been really liking this lip balm. I don't really like Mario Badescu kind of as a brand. Like, I kind of like feel like it's a brand I need to steer clear of because I'm not really sure that their stuff does anything. Okay, so here's what we're playing with today. We're going to do a little bit of a comparison thing from one side of the face to the other. I don't know how different it's going to be, but it's relevant. It's like a new product versus a product I already own and kind of calling my own bluff. But today I wanted to play with the colored rain palette. I wanted to keep it simple. All the stuff in my top drawer wasn't like inspiring me today. And I really have been liking the palette that I made, but I just feel like I've been kind of using it the most. So today we're going to play with the queen of hearts palette. I think we're going to dip into the orange and the purples. That feels like where I want to land. The comparison I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Burberry bronzer. This is a cream bronzer in here and compare it to my new Le Beige Chan 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 Chanel Le Beige, why can't, the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream from Chanel. That's what I'm going to compare it together. I think I might use a blush in here, but I did pull out a blush from Hourglass that I would like to maybe play with. I also pulled the Flex highlighter, so I might use everything from here or I might, I, you know, giving myself options. I always have my Chantecaille blurring powder out ready to go. I have dim light also out ready to go in case I want to use that. And then as far as primer goes, I'm going to be using the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Base and then foundation, Pat McGrath and the YSL All Over Brightening Concealer Pen for concealer. I know you've all been waiting on bated breath to hear whether or not if I saw Scream, but I did see Scream over the weekend when I was taking my contacts out from getting home from Scream is when I scratched my eyes. So. Beautiful timing, beautiful timing. Here's, okay, so I'm not a movie person. I, like, let me know down in the comments below if you're like a movie person, but I actually like don't watch a lot of movies. I actually don't like watch a lot of TV. I have mentioned this before. I am mostly like a YouTube consumer and like podcasts as well. So those are like my two places that I mostly get content. I've seen all four Screams and I would consider myself a Scream fan, but I'm not like a super fan because my opinions do not align with a lot of like the Scream fandoms. And if you are a Scream fan and you're like part of the culture, I apologize for what I'm about to say, but I'm a big fan of number four. It's not my favorite Scream movie, but it is my second favorite Scream movie. The first one really holds like that near and dear space in my heart, especially because of like the opening scene of the original Scream. But Scream 4 has always been my favorite. I like how funny it is. I like how campy it is. And I understand that it's a tonal shift from the first three, but like there was just something about it. And I kind of, you know, being a millennial and like the topics discussed in number four really resonated with me at the time. And I think that's like why I like it. 
And I guess some scream. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna not try to talk about any spoilers about the fifth scream. There's one thing I want to mention, but I will give you a warning and I will give you like a skip time. But I promise I won't be doing anything interesting in my makeup in that time. Okay, I just primed my eyes. <laughs> I just primed my. Speaking of things I'm using, I just primed my eyes with the Air Atelier Eye Primer, and I'm going to be using the shade Air right here to set the primer. This is a, I guess, a spoiler for Scream Four, if you haven't seen it yet, and it's something that's on your to-do list. But here you go. Here's a lit. Uh, I'll put a timestamp at the bottom. But the way that Jill in Scream Five like hurts her whole ass body and like throws her whole body into making it look like uh she was a victim truly truly genius truly wonderful truly one of those things that like sits in my mind as like a very it feels like it feels like important it feels like a, an important piece of cinema again i have trash taste in cinema because i like don't i like don't care that much about it i really don't you know i just appear to have fun and scream 4 to me was fun it has you know, it's all like the cast is very 2012 besides the core cast. So I always liked it. So I figured if they were making another Scream movie, Scream 4 did not go over well with the fandom pretty much in general. I'm taking the shade Empress, which is this orange shade, and I'm going to try to use it as a transition, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple on the eyes. I'm feeling like lazy. But it's not going to go. Scream 5, here's my, again, I'm not, I'm gonna not say any spoilers, and if I, if something cuts out, it means I have accidentally said a spoiler and I will remove it, but my overall thoughts on it were that it was much, and again, it's a Scream movie, it's much gorier than any of the other Scream movies. The, there are a lot of shots that, like, linger on wounds, which I guess I really wasn't expecting, I guess because normally like you'll see it for a second and then it cuts away real quick in the typical like scream movie situation but like they really want you to be seeing this the score and so I I know that the people who made this scream who are responsible for this scream were the people who made ready or not which is also a movie that I really enjoy but unlike Ready or Not, which I thought was, like, very funny, like, it kept it light, but also was a horror movie. And that's, like, kind of my my favorite type of horror movie is, like, one that is, like, a horror comedy. And I know that, like, that's sacrilegious to say to a lot of horror movie fans, but that's just what I like. And again, we're on my channel, so, you know, you're just gonna have to live with what I like. I'm going back into that cream shade I set the base with and I'm just going along the edges of this orange shade just to diffuse it just a little bit just a little bit just blend it out a little bit more the tone in this scream movie was pretty it was pretty dark it was pretty dark and again I guess that makes sense because it's like a bunch of people are like dying in the movie well actually <laughs> I would say, like, less people than usual actually die. And so I guess that was, like, an interesting thing that happened. I don't think that's really a spoiler, but, like, you know, it just, it's not. And I felt like the pacing was slow, but I've been listening to some content that other people have said that it's been, it, it, it really moves for them. And I did not feel that way. It didn't feel, like, agonizingly slow. To me, it did not feel like Scream 4, which, like, goes, goes, goes. You know, it's, like, very quick. At least to me. I know some people who don't like it probably disagree, would disagree with that. Okay, now I'm going to take the shade Royal Prerogative, which is the shade right here, and I'm going to put that in the crease. So it wasn't as funny as, like, you know, what, what I guess I thought I was getting myself into. I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I did think to myself, would I want to see this again? Like, I got to go back to the theater. And I'm going to go ahead and say, like, that's, like, not off the table. Like, I, I liked it, and I... I just had, I had a lot of fun and I had fun with the person I went with. So that was all good. You know, it was just a very, very good night. So I will always probably think very fondly of the new Scream movie. It's like Scream 5, but it's called Scream 20, like it's Scream 2022 anyway. I'm going to say something and I don't think it's actually a spoiler, but if you want to watch the movie and I'm just, so... I'm gonna put a timestamp here and you can skip to there to miss what I'm about to say. And I will be continuing to build up my crease shade while I say this. Okay, so if you are familiar with the franchise and you've seen Scream 4 enough 
to know the characters. So Hayden Panettiere in Scream 4 plays a character named Kirby. Kirby was my favorite character in Scream 4. And Kirby gets killed off screen in Scream 4. However, and this is stuff that I've learned just from like listening to podcasts and other things. Wes Anderson, creator of Scream, originary Scream, RIP to a real one, said that Kirby survived. He always said that Kirby, the intention was that Kirby survived. You did not see her die on screen. One of the rules in the Scream franchise, it's like if you don't die, like it's like if they say if you don't die on screen, then you have like that person is still alive. So confirmed in the fourth movie, so confirmed in Scream 5 is that Kirby is still alive. Now, Hayden Pentier is actually not in the movie. If you're, if you are like not a film person and you didn't care that I was going to talk about this, she's not actually in the movie. And what actually happens, and this is because I watch so much YouTube, there is the one person's watching a YouTube video about Stab and the people in the YouTube video are Becca and James from Dead Meat, which is very funny. But in the recommended videos on the side, it says Woodsboro survivor Kirby tells all. That means Kirby is still alive. And that's all I needed to know. Now, I hope that Hayden Panettiere comes back to the franchise. That'd be very fun. But okay, that's all I really want to talk about. And now I'm going to go back into talking about. Anyway, if you really like the other Scream movies, or even if you didn't and you like wanted like a, a fun movie to see, I think Scream is a very good one to see. I, I do think it helps to know a little bit of the lore. So if you're not familiar with the franchise, I don't think you can go in like completely uneducated. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And I would definitely, like I, I just, like was it the best movie I'll see this year? Probably not, but it also might be the only movie I end up seeing this year. So, you know, keeping things realistic, keeping your expectations low if you're going to take my recommendation for a movie, which I would say is like maybe not the right move because again, I'm not a big movie person. There was also there was like there was one choice and I'm going to save this for, you know, other spaces to talk about that I was like very confused by, but like I it did not it did not kill the vibe for me you know, it, I still had a very good time. I'm gonna go into the shade Ladyship, which is this purple, and I'm gonna put that, focus that on the outer V. Now I'm not gonna tap it off because I really want the purple to show. Other than that, I feel like I haven't been doing much. I will be going out, I will be doing a little bit more this weekend which is you know fine by me i don't really need to do i'm i'm there i am satisfied not leaving my house like that is something i am kind of like a-okay with i'm gonna go in with like a, a flatter brush just to like continue to build this up i'm just tapping it on too actually you know what else what else i'm gonna do i'm going to take the shade Queen Mother, which is a shimmer purple, and also I'm just gonna put that on top of Ladyship. Because I really have been loving like a satin out there, but I do think it's nice to have that base of the matte purple to put on top as well. And then literally right on the very, very outside, I'm going to put the darkest brown Duchess, and it's a matte, and I'm gonna leave that like right like right here, just like right here, and just kind of blend that up. And I think for the lid, I'm going to use Noble Woman, which is that like, I don't know, let me swatch it though. That shade right there, yeah, that's gonna look bitchin'. Okay, and I am gonna prime the lid a little bit with the, Pat McGrath intensifies, which I think I have my final thoughts on. I just need to write some notes on it. It looks so much more vibrant on camera than it does in real life. Well, like, not that it doesn't look vibrant in real life, but it looks particularly good on camera, which we love to see. We love that. I mean, we love our eyes to look good under any situation, right? 
And then I'm gonna go back in with a little more of Queen Mother and just blend the edges here. So I'm gonna take a Royal Highness which is the shade right here. And I'm gonna do that on the inner corner. Hi, Ryan. I see you. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You are stunning. I do, I have been enjoying doing like that oil slick thing that like Hannah Louise Poston is like, she's like obviously not the originator of, but like she's who I've watched that has inspired me to do it. So I grabbed my Natasha Denona Coral Palette. I'm gonna take this center shade here and I'm gonna just sweep it. Wonderful. I actually really like this eye look quite a bit. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool. I'm into it. I also, you know, anytime I use like something with like like red undertones, it just makes my eyes pop so much. So like the orange and like the reddish shade on my lid, as well as the purple really are doing something special for my face. Let's start putting on our face, our base. We're gonna use the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Base. It is unfortunate, it is getting low enough that I just feel like sticking my finger in there is really weird, so I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking a product spatula to get some out. It's not like I'm running low, I don't feel like I need to buy another one yet, but it is like more annoying to get out of the tub as I'm progressing. Oh, I haven't used this in so long, so it feels like such a treat to just put on my face right now, the smell. Mm. I have been using this, which I really like, and this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Primer. Still a great primer, but it's just, I've been putting things in my top drawer, which there's gonna be a video on, and those are the things that as in my makeup playtime that I have been pulling out the most to play with because I wanna spend some time with those items, and, it, like, not that I have, have over all of the items that I have put in my top drawer, but I was getting just like, you know, I need a little bit of a refresher, which why, which is why I think I'm going to show everything that's currently in my top drawer and then rearrange things, because we're almost at the end of the month. I think I want to make another self-made palette, but I don't know what color story or what's inspiring me at this point, so... That's all to come. <laughs> that's all to come on my channel. Okay, and I'm going to be using the Pat McGrath Foundation. There, there, this, this is almost gone. It has, like, I don't know how much more I'm gonna get out of her. Speaking of, like, movies and television, because, you know, that was kind of <laughs> today's topic, I guess. Um, oh, someone had, in my last one, in my last one of these Let's Play With Makeup, I kind of, because I, t they got, they said it was really funny when I talked about Scream for a bit, which I don't even remember, like, what I said about Scream in that one, other than, like, don't spoil it for me. And, but they had said, we would love, like, love to hear your commentary and some, like, other things. And I thought, you know, we could probably do some themed Let's Play With Makeup, where we talk about, like, the makeup, but also, like, another thing. And I guess I did once reach out for, like, Q&A questions, but I didn't get that many. And, you know, I wasn't really expecting to get that many, but I, like, threw it out there as an option. So I thought, like, you know, one thought is like we could do one of these and like have questions or like another thought I had is like the show RuPaul's Drag Race, which is not a show I watch, but it was a show I used to actually cover on a podcast with my friend Tiffany, which we are, you know, I've said this before and like this is like kind of a shameless plug, but like our podcast Recollect is coming back on February 2nd. So shameless plug there, but we became podcasters through another podcast called It Bears Repeating and it was a recap show. Initially it was a recap show for RuPaul's Drag Race. So I thought maybe an interesting topic could be like me talking about like my relationship with the show and like my thoughts on the show now versus like when I started and like where my feelings sit on the show. If that's something that people would be interested in, I'd be more than happy to do, you know, talk about that. Or if there were any other topics you would be interested in hearing me talk about during a uh, Let's Play With Makeup, I'd be more than happy to hear them and, you know, maybe consider covering it. Whatever you're, whatever you're interested in hearing me talk, blab about, I guess. It's not because I don't think I could come up with interesting things to talk about. I, I like, enjoy playing with the makeup and that's really it, you know? That could be the beginning and the end of the content. But if there was something you would want thrown in, 
I could come up with some thoughts and ideas. Obviously, I don't want to get anything like too heavy on my channel. Like, so like, you know, we're not gonna talk about politics or things like that. So something that I started doing this week, and I don't know if any of you are, like obviously like Wordle has kind of like taken the world by storm recently, which is so bizarre. Uh, um, but I've been playing and I've been having a really good time. Honestly, it's a fun game. I like that it's like one a day. It's like very kind of like low commitment <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. So like, I enjoy that. Also, I put the all over brightening concealer just under my eyes and then just like a little flick on the edge of my eyeballs. I know that you probably saw that happen, but I just wanted to reiterate because I realized that I wasn't talking about the product. A couple days ago, the word was null. And I was like, I would never have gotten that. I've gotten every other word since I started playing, but that one was like tricky. Now it's time for our bronzer comparison. We're gonna do the right side will be the Chanel bronzer, and then the left side will be the Burberry bronzer. I'm doing this because I've talked a lot of shit about the Burberry bronzer, and then I kind of was like thinking about it, and I felt like that maybe they kind of looked the same or maybe might perform the same, and so I was like just trying to test that out. So they're not, they're not the same tone. My complaint about the Burberry one is that it's like rather intense and it like, not that it doesn't blend, but it's just like not the kind of bronze that I'm typically into. And this is also more intense than the bronze that I typically do. However, I have been enjoying it as a bronze. So we're gonna put the Chanel again on this side. So I'm thinking it's just maybe the formula that I might be more into than the Burberry. But I wanted to compare them. It's not, I'm not like, it's not like with the Fenty, which I did get rid of because I didn't need another cream bronzer because I really like the blushes and highlighters in the Burberry palette. But the bronzer is like the thing that like leaves much to be desired in my opinion in the Burberry Warm Glow Essentials or Warm Glow Essentials. so pretty i really i so it's funny because i've been trying to really kind of temper my my feelings on this chanel bronzer but the more i use it the, the more i like it and the more i think i was watching khaki's video uh she had a chanel video that she did and she was she wasn't really impressed with the cream bronzer sticks and my thought is why isn't I'll link her channel down below and her Chanel video specifically. But if they made cream blushes in this formula and maybe sold them in like a much smaller container, I don't know. I think that they, that would be a beautiful formula. Okay, Chanel. Okay, now I'm gonna put, this could be a big mistake, but that's the fun of this. Play, makeup playtime is to play. So if my both sides of my face look completely differently bronzed, that is fine. All right, so I'm gonna put the Burberry, I'm gonna put the Burberry on this side. I already feel like I have too much on, but we are committed at this point. Okay, I'm gonna take the same brush. Burberry, Chanel, Burberry. Now, they don't look, well, okay. So this definitely is more pigmented, more intense. However, like the, the, the color isn't reading too different from side to side. The Burberry is definitely like much more of an intense highlight. And I think if I built up the Chanel, which I'm going to do now, that it would like match it. But here's the thing. This feels like much more easy breezy to me than the Burberry one. That's it. Like it blends, it bl blended out much faster, much easier, much more seamless. Like this wasn't like a ton of work to blend out, but it is like a much different approach to, to like the, the Burberry is so intense and it's like, this just is so much easier in my opinion, personal opinion. So 
I still think I can use the Burberry bronzer, but the Chanel definitely performs in a, a fashion that I like more. But again, not, not in a rush to like get rid of the Burberry bronzer. I'm gonna set my face. I'm gonna use the Chantecaille because we're gonna be using powder for the rest of the face. Anyway, I was talking about TV earlier and then I was like, let's talk about makeup. <sighs> I've been watching Pushing Daisies, which they they have on HBO Max right now. And I watched it when it was on air, so it's not like I haven't seen it before, but it uh, is so good. It's just as good as I remember it being. You know, I just have been very much enjoying that. And then I was like, maybe I should revisit some other older shows like that I haven't watched in a while, but I probably won't. I probably won't. You know what's been funny? I've been watching, like what I've been really watching a lot of is old Smoky Glow videos. And um, I'm subscribed to Smoky Glow. I'm, I'm subscribed to Hannah. This is Euphoric Fusion from Hourglass, but it has been like very calming. And I think I've watched a lot of her back catalog. I'm pretty sure I watched, I started watching Hannah, Smoky Glow Hannah, not Hannah Louise Poston, who I oft discuss it on my channel. I've been watching her since like 2020, like right around the time like of lockdown and she was very much like a comfort watch for me. And so it's been fun to like watch her old stuff and like watch how her channel has developed because you know, she's she still talks about makeup, but she definitely is more like more commentary focused recently. And so that's, it's been like fun to watch that evolution happening on my my screen but like you know i don't know why that's what i've been watching i don't know why i'm so hell-bent to like share what i've been watching i'm gonna highlight with the flex highlighter from milk makeup this is in the shade lit which i do believe is a discontinued shade and i think they're probably discontinuing this product just in general based on how difficult it is to find but you can still find some of the other shades on milk's website That's a vibe. That's something I am into. I am going to take the shade Queen Mother, this purple shimmer, and I'm gonna put that along the lower lash line. Down a little intrigue, a little something something, a little fun, fun, fun. I would normally tight line, but I think because of my eye trauma that I experienced the other day that I'm gonna forgo that step today. So pre pretend I have eyeliner on, but it won't be actually happening today. I'm gonna spray my face with some MAC Fix Plus, fan that, and then I will be right back. For mascara, I am going to be using the Big Mood Mascara from e.l.f. So I believe my subscriber, I believe it was, their name is Tracy, had commented on my last Let's Play With Makeup saying that this mascara had flaked. If your pronouns are different, I'm so sorry. I am going to be using gender neutral pronouns when making references to from subscribers because I'm not gonna make any assumptions, and I think that is just the best way to proceed. Tracy said that this had flaked on them, and I, I haven't had that problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that Tracy has worn this much more than I have. I unplugged, I took down two of my lights, so it's a little bit darker. I was starting to get blown out, and that always tends to happen at the end of my makeup process, so the lighting just did change, so you're not, you're not crazy, and also there's some natural light coming in, so. But I did wear this all day on Saturday, and I didn't have any flaking, but I'm going to guess that Tracy has had more air exposure, like, by using the product than I have. So I'm just sharing that experience with you because I'm like, I like this mascara, but I'm also not, like, telling, I don't feel like I need to share the good word of the secret of the Elf Big Moon Mascara because I think everyone needs it. I like it, but I don't think it, like, I don't know that I think it's the best. But also, I'm not, like, a, I don't, like, I like nice mascara. I like a good mascara, but also I don't feel like I'm as picky about mascara as a lot of people are. 
But I have yet to have an experience where it's transferred or flaked out on me. I'm just taking off the Maria Badescu. And I think I'm just gonna do a nude, like a classic nude lip. I'm going to line my lips with the Supernatural Gel Lip Liner from Pat McGrath. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna use the shade Flesh 3 all over the lips. This is a matte trans lipstick from Pat McGrath. All right, here's the final look. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can take a closer look at my skin. Let's start with the eyes. Okay, I'm gonna turn the bright lights back on because I think that'll be helpful for this activity. Burberry, Chanel. Burberry, Chanel. Let me know if you see a difference down below. Really like this eye look, really like this eye look. The cheek. It is, to me personally, a shame that Milk seems to have discontinued this highlighter because I think it's so stunning. The blush from Hourglass, beautiful. Bronzer on both sides actually looking pretty good. Okay, I don't look as blown out, so I'm gonna keep the lights back up. So as I do in these videos, I'm going to review my experience using each item because it's good to reflect on things, you know? I just think that if you take a little bit more of a second to reflect on them, it, it, it does a little bit of a world of good. Oh wait, so first up, this is the Queen of Hearts palette from Colored Rain, which I don't even think I said. I was like, I'll be using this palette. So this is the Queen of Hearts palette from Colored Rain. Today I used Air to set my eye primer so it didn't really do a lot. As far as things go, Empress is the orange shade on the outside. It looks really good, blended out very nicely. When I first put it on, I got a little nervous that I might have picked the wrong shade, but turned out to work well in my favor. And I also did blend out the edges of the orange shade with air. We did use Royal Prerogative, this brown shade here. That was the crease, blended beautifully. Duchess on the far, far out corner, blended beautifully. Queen Mother on the outer corner, blended beautifully. We also used Ladyship underneath Queen Mother, it worked out very well. And then on the lids, we have Noble Woman, which again, just this palette, if you were ever interested in it, if this is a color story that you really love and that you will get a lot of use out of, and it's like, if you don't have that many eyeshadow palettes, I would say that this is like a great, great first palette for someone. So even if you're gifting it to someone, I just think that colored rain shadows are just so easy to work with. They're so lovely. And I, I, this palette has been around my in my collection for so long. It may now be the oldest palette in my collection. Like it may be the one that I've had the longest. It's so good. I love it so much. Then with a fluffy brush, I did take the shade in the center of this Natasha Denona. And that is what is giving us that wet purple look. Beautiful, love this shade as well gorgeous and stunning. So eyeshadow, truly a success. I think my eyes look really, really good. Oh boy, was it so lovely to use the Vitamin Rich Face Base from Bobbi Brown. It is such a great primer. And I, I'm, I'm not saying this lately. I'm not saying, I, I, I hope that you know that I'm never like trying to sell you something, but if you were ever, ever interested in trying it, I don't think you'll be disappointed in it. It just is that girl. It's so, so good. I did see recently that my friend here on YouTube, Chloe, which is who is Twiggly Puff here on YouTube, but on Instagram, she had posted that she had tried a sample of this and she's like, I'm gonna buy the full size. And I was like, it is, it is so good. Foundation, the Pat McGrath. I really can't wait for this to be done. It's not that I don't even like this foundation, but the other day I did pull out a different foundation. So, cause I just like, didn't want to use this again because I was like getting like bored of using it. And the reason I'm getting bored of using it is not because like, cause I feel like that kind of mindset, saying it like that, thinking of things like that is not good. What I'm tired of using it because I know I'm not gonna buy it again. And I don't like it enough to like relish every moment in the last, cause I have so many other foundations that I really wanna get to, but I don't wanna spend too much time with them until I have panned a few of the foundations that I like enough to finish, but I don't, I'm not running out, you know what I mean? Like, so the other day I used my Dr. Jart BB cream and it looked so good. And I was so excited to use it because it was like finally not using the Pat McGrath. But we're almost done, we're almost done. And I will hold out. This is another thing that I'm trying to finish up, but I like this a lot more than the Pat McGrath foundation. This is something that I would reconsider purchasing. I have another one of these. So 
this is gonna be around for a while, but I'm almost done with this one, so I have also been using this all of the time because I really wanna spend some more time with my Armani concealer, which I really, really love. But this is nice as well. I had a great time using it today. It did what I needed it to do, makes my under eyes look really good. All right, let's talk about these bronzers, the battle of the bronze. So the Burberry bronzer and the Chanel bronzer. Chanel's on this side, Burberry's on this side. I, now that I have them on, I just realized that this is so intense and maybe I need to do something to dilute it a little bit more before I put it on my face so maybe it would look more like the Chanel one. Now the Chanel, this is an application, this is still two applications of the Chanel on my cheek, but it's still not as intense as this Burberry. Like it's still not it. The Chanel was far more easier to blend. This one wasn't difficult to blend, but there was a certain amount of easier, like ease of use that came with the Chanel that the Burberry does not have. So that's my opinion. If you were looking for a luxury cream bronzer, like this would be what I would suggest to you more. However, both brands, both Burberry and Chanel have terrible shade ranges for their bronzers. So uh, know that before you would make a purchase from either one. The Chanel one is definitely better. So I enjoyed using both of these today. And I also, every time I use the Burberry bronzer, I do feel like I like it a little bit more. Because at first I hated it and I was like, I'll never use this again. And as time progresses, I am warming <laughs> warming up to it. But I do, I do think it's just skosh pigmented. It's like a little too pigmented for me. I really like my cream products to be if I have to layer them, I'd rather layer them than have to blend them out. Or if they, if it looks pigmented and blends out and like it is just the perfect application, I would also like that. But I think that the Burberry one's just like a little too much. Oh, the Arite Atelier Eye Primer. I really like this primer for my eyes. Hourglass blushes are my favorite formula of blushes. So really enjoyed using this. And I do think Euphoric Fusion of, no, it's not. At Night is my favorite blush from Hourglass, but this one is a very close second. I also have Incandescent Electra, which is like not my favorite. <laughs> From Milk, the the highlighter. I truly am so sad that the, the this shade is not something anyone would be able to buy now. I just think it's so, so pretty. And this highlighter is so stinking pretty. And I hate that. I hate that. I hate that they discontinued this or whatever they're doing with it. Maybe they're changing the packaging, but oh my God, I like, it's, it makes me, it's, this will be one of those products that I will relish until the day that I either break it or use it all the way up. I just think it's such a beautiful highlighter. My Chantecai Blurring Powder. If you've been here for a while, you know that I'm a big fan. Really like it. We're st there is, so the embossing is obviously gone, but we are now divoting. We are divoting, which is nice to see. We love progress. On this channel, we do not shy away from progress, even on our luxury products. We love to see usage. That's what we do. We buy products to use them. Well, I buy products to use them. You might buy products to collect them, but I buy products to use them. That's the mentality I want to have about makeup. The Big Mood Mascara, I feel like I talked a lot about this as I was using it, so I like it enough. I, I might buy a second one, but also I have heard from other people who have tried this that they have not has had they have not had as fortunate as an experience as I've had thus far with the mascara. The Supernatural Lip Liner from Pat McGrath. I, I've said this before in other videos, but I am not like a lip liner fiend. I I've only ever tried Pat McGrath. So I don't know if it's a good formula. I don't know if there are, I'm sure there are other formulas that are very lovely that I have never tried, but I like it enough. I have it, I use it. The intensifies, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off telling you how I feel about this moving forward until my video on this exclusively. And then Flesh 3 from Pat McGrath. It lays so much better on top of that Mario Badescu after, you know, like my lips, oh, this is a beautiful shade. And I think it works so well with the look that we put together today. All right, that was everything that we used today. If you enjoyed this video and you are new here and not are not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. This is the kind of content that we are here doing on my channel. And don't forget to like this video because it does really help me get into the front of the eyes of other people who might enjoy my content. And I am also on Patreon, again, if you would like to support me 
there. One more thing. Next Wednesday, February 2nd, my podcast with my friend Tiffany called Recollect will be relaunching. It was a Patreon only podcast. If you've been here before, you've already heard this. But if you haven't made it all the way to the end of my video, hi, hello. Recollect is a podcast that I used to do with my friend Tiffany on Patreon only, and now it is going to be free, exclusively available on Spotify, released each week. Follow us on Instagram at Recollect Pod. You can also bop and stop the songs along with us over there. And that's a lot of fun. To date, Dion is the most recent North American artist to reach number one on the chart and only the fourth overall. That makes sense. I don't know why we're counting Celine as a North American. Canada is. Do we lump it in with North America? I'm still I'm being honest. It's Canada. Canada is Canada. <laughs> Mexico is also North America. No. It's a whole continent. <laughs> 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 you, I would love for you. I know I. I'm not really. I'm really trying not to make fun of you right now. You can make fun of me. Uh, I don't know what everything. You th what did you think? What do you think North America entailed? Just the United States, I guess. And why would it have two different names? I don't know. Because <laughs> I think Canada deserves its autonomy. I suppose. Well, it, it's its own country. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up. Remember to follow your hoat and you will find me and I will see you in my next video. I appreciate you all so much for watching. I will see you then. Bye, friends.